Thank you for joining us for the third annual Global Summit, Global Kidney Innovations, Expanding Patient Choices and Outcomes, a collaborative partnership event presented by the American Association of Kidney Patients and the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. My name is Glenda Roberts and I am an AAKP ambassador for the state of Washington. Being a part of the AAKP has enabled me to elevate the patient voice in three ways, education, advocacy, and communicate with the community. As an ambassador, I'm able to raise the patient voice, not just my own voice, but it creates an opportunity for me to invite other patients and care partners to educate researchers, innovators, regulators, and investors about the needs and preferences of people living with kidney disease. So when I call on you, please say yes. I've also had the honor to serve with other AAKP ambassadors as we advocate with congressional leaders for policies and, and enhancements that benefit our communities. Being a member of the AAKP Speakers Bureau has created opportunities for me to tell our stories in a variety of settings intended to increase more organ donors and encourage more innovation. To remind us that as patients, we play a critical role both in the US and globally in creating the demand for innovation and more choices because our lives hang in the balance and to encourage our community to participate in research that drives those innovations and insights to produce better choices for people living with kidney disease. Professionally, I serve in a variety of roles at the University of Washington. I am the Director of External Relations and Patient Engagement for the Kidney Research Institute, as well as the Center for Dialysis Innovation. And I am also the Chief Strategy Operations Officer for the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Center, JEDI, for innovative research at the University of Washington. But for me, this work is personal. I was diagnosed with kidney disease when I had been out of college for less than a week. Many people know my story about how I used diet and exercise to slow the progression of my disease before I undertook therapies that included in-center hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, and transplantation. But what you don't know is when the doctor told me that I had kidney disease, I asked three questions. First, what caused it and how long had I had it? He said, I don't know probably about 10 years. I said, what kind of kidney disease do I have? He said, I don't know. And then I said, well, how do we treat it? And he said, we start dialysis. Well, you all know that I took a different route, but I think the important thing here is that unfortunately, not much progress has been made in the last 60 years. This has been a one size fits all approach. And my personal journey has introduced me to the importance of access to kidney care research and innovation, like those that are currently being investigated and pursued by the Kidney Research Institute and the Center for Dialysis Innovation. Today, I am pleased to introduce a wonderful friend and ally of AAKP, Dr. Jonathan Himmelfarb co-director of the University of Washington Center for Dialysis Innovation, director of the Kidney Research Institute, a professor of medicine, and an adjunct professor of bioengineering. Dr. Himmelfarb is also the co-principal investigator for the Kidney Research Institute, or KPMP. KPMP is an ambitious multi-year project funded by NIDDK. Its purpose is to understand and find ways to treat chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury. But from a patient perspective, KPMP recognizes that kidney disease is not a one size fits all experience. Its goal is to define the right treatment for the right patient at the right time. Dr. Himmelfarb will speak to us today about emerging research with global implications, identification and diagnosis of kidney diseases. 
the Kidney Precision Medicine Project. Dr. Himmelfarb, we look forward to your comments. My name is Jonathan Himmelfarb. I'm a nephrologist and a professor of medicine at the University of Washington. And I'd like to thank the AAKP for the opportunity today to discuss with you the Kidney Precision Medicine Project, which is a very exciting NIH funded project looking for breakthroughs in kidney health. And I'm hopeful that we can find a breakthrough in kidney health together. Well, what is the Kidney Precision Medicine Project or KPMP? It's a multi-year collaboration of many leading research institutions around the United States who have convened together to study patients with important kidney diseases that often lead to kidney failure. And our goal is to understand the mechanisms of the two most dominant conditions that affect the public health related to kidney function in the United States. These are acute kidney injury or AKI and chronic kidney disease or CKD. The goals of the Kidney Precision Medicine Project ultimately are to identify new treatments and better treatments for the most common types of kidney diseases that will have the most impact on the most people living with kidney disease. In order to accomplish that goal, our plan is to ethically collect kidney biopsies from participants in the study who have these conditions, either acute kidney injury or chronic kidney disease. And with those kidney biopsies, we will create what's called a kidney tissue atlas in health and in disease to better define what's going on in the kidney uh, that can help us identify these new treatments. And by doing this, we also hope to identify new subgroups, meaning of all the people with chronic kidney disease, for example, or acute kidney injury, can we classify each of these individuals in a way that will give a better understanding of what's really causing the disease for that individual person. That's really the goal of precision medicine. And critical to the success of the Kidney Precision Medicine Project, from the get-go we have recognized the need for patient engagement in every activity. Patients really are at the core of the Kidney Precision Medicine Project and patients sit on all of our important committees and working groups and are very active in defining how this whole consortium works. Now, how do patients fit into this structure of this complex uh, research project, the KPMP? The primary mechanism is through what we call the Community Engagement Committee or CEC. And this committee is central to almost everything that happens inside the KPMP. The membership of this committee consists of patients, scientists, and clinicians together. And together they deliberate on all the important issues in KPMP and they advise every aspect of the consortium and of the work that gets done. They advise the leadership. They again are connected to all of our different committee activities. Many of the committees, when they're grappling with an ethical issue or a problematic issue, will say, well, let's see what the Community Engagement Committee thinks about that. So this has become perhaps the most influential committee in all of the Kidney Precision Medicine Project. And since the goal of KPMP is to conduct cutting edge research in an effort to help patients, we want to design the study to answer the questions that patients have for us. And patients wanna know, what do I have? What will happen to me? What can I do about it? And what does it mean for my family in many cases, as many kidney diseases have a familial or a genetic component. And most patients prefer what we call a precision medicine approach. And that means for a given individual person with kidney disease, what's the right intervention or the right treatment, in other words, for the right patient at the right time, rather than one size fits all, where we would treat whole groups of patients the same and some would benefit from that treatment and some might not, what's the best possible intervention or treatment for me with my condition? That's what patients really wanna know. And that's the essence of what we call precision medicine. 
Now, why would an individual with kidney disease want to participate in KPNP? Recognizing that this is a research project, it involves undergoing a kidney biopsy, so it involves taking some personal risk, where the goal is to provide information for the greater good. So this study really involves altruism. It involves people trying to help others and not necessarily getting personal benefit from participating in this study. In order for this study to be ethical, it's important that there be a rationale that makes sense for why somebody would want to participate in the study. And the rationale really has to do with what an important public health problem kidney disease is. We know it's now the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, that many millions of people, both in the United States and globally, have chronic kidney disease or develop acute kidney injury. And furthermore, most of the people who end up on dialysis or getting a kidney transplant, their disease was attributed to hypertension or diabetes. They're disproportionately African-American. African-Americans are roughly 12% of the US population and at least 33% of the population of people that end up on dialysis. So it's one of the greatest healthcare disparities that we have in our society. Many people of recent West African descent carry genetic risks uh, that may account for that excess risk of kidney disease. And we want to be able to understand that to mitigate that risk and improve the health care for African Americans. For so many people that have kidney disease that's attributed to diabetes or attributed to high blood pressure, the standard of care does not include a kidney biopsy. So many people go through life knowing they have kidney disease, the kidney disease is getting worse, and their physicians did not recommend a kidney biopsy. So we don't really understand at the tissue level inside the kidney what's really going on, what are the mechanisms that are causing the disease process. We do know with acute kidney injury that these episodes that are increasingly frequent, especially among people in the hospital, that this can be very morbid and even mortal cause mortality. And also we've learned that episodes of acute kidney injury, even when it seems like somebody has recovered well, can contribute very substantially to the subsequent development of chronic kidney disease, or for those people who already had chronic dis kidney disease, it can cause that disease to progress much faster. Unfortunately, there have been very few new effective therapies that have been developed for both chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury in the absence of understanding inside the kidney at a tissue level. And that's the problem we're trying to address with the Kidney Precision Medicine Project. So to improve the public health, we really do need these research level biopsies for these very common diseases that afflict so many people. Now, there is risk to undergoing a kidney biopsy. And so our patients have concerns and we, from the get-go of even thinking about this project, the National Institutes of Health convene panels of patients with kidney disease as well as ethicists to evaluate whether this study was an ethical study. And after a lot of consideration, the patient participants in the early phases and also now on our community engagement committee and the ethicists have all concluded this study is a highly ethical study. Even though there's limited benefit to the individuals who are going to undergo a biopsy and participate in the research, there's a very large benefit to society. That is only ethically okay if the information that we're going to obtain is greatly exceeds the potential risks. And that means that we have to absolutely minimize the risks in every possible way for participants in this study. And we really have to honor and value every single person who participates in this study. As one of our patients on the Community Engagement Committee recently stated, the patient participants are the heroes of this study. So that's critically important for this study uh, to be an ethical study, and that is embedded uh, philosophically in everything that we do. We want to uh, enhance safety, minimize discomfort, 
and minimize or eliminate any costs to individuals from participating in this study. Now, the issue of cost came up and was brought up by our patients on our community engagement committee, uh, that if you are altruistically asked to participate in the study and you agree to in a study, and you undergo a kidney biopsy that may or may not have been medically advisable and may not be medically necessary, as a quote from one of our uh, patients was, it sounds unconscionable to put all the financial here, altruistic kidney tissue donor. So we took that to heart, and perhaps as a first in its kind study, we have obtained a no fault ident identification insurance to ensure that participants won't be penalized by participating in this study. As I mentioned on the previous slide, we want to do absolutely everything we possibly can to ensure participant safety in the kidney precision medicine project. That's especially centered around the kidney biopsy. And so we've gone to great lengths to create criteria and protocols in this study that'll maximize safety, minimize the chances for any harm, both prior to the kidney biopsy, during the kidney biopsy, and after the kidney biopsy. This includes creating biopsy checklists that are looked at immediately prior to the biopsy by having a safety adjudication committee and a data safety monitoring committee that looks at any complications that take place. And most importantly, by creating a culture for problems and addressing those problems sooner rather than later, ideally preemptively before any harm takes place. And I say with certainty that we're doing everything we can to ensure participant safety. And to date, participants have done very well in this study. And we also go through a process after the biopsy of surveying our participants to ensure their satisfaction with participating in the study. We value our participants uh, very much. They really truly are the heroes of KPMP. So with all the precautions that we're taking uh, and uh, for this study, how do we expect to change the world for people living with acute kidney injury or chronic kidney disease? Well, with biopsy tissue, this is a picture of how the work proceeds in this study really after the biopsy has taken place. In what's called the clinical presentation, which is all the information from surveys and questions and laboratory tests and looking at the electronic medical record. We amalgamate that data for each participant. We look at the pathology, the tissue, the kidney tissue under the microscope, and we use some very fancy digital techniques to really understand the biopsy tissue. And then we use really truly state-of-the-art technologies to interrogate that biopsy tissue on a cellular basis to understand what's happening with every single cell inside that kidney biopsy that's either causing the disease process or perhaps accelerating repair. And then we will track clinical outcomes in the long term and we'll use all these data sets together, tremendous amount of data. And that's part of why we value every participant in this study to create the kidney atlas that we talked about, up these mechanism-based disease subtypes to identify the critical cells, pathways, and targets so that people can develop better and safer treatments for the variety of kidney diseases. The consortium is a large consortium. We now have over 40 different major academic medical centers and literally hundreds of investigators uh, working in this study collaboratively together and all for the same common goal, which is to really understand and create new better, safer, more effective treatments for the common types of kidney disease, acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease. So we have a plan. We have many investigators at the leading medical centers throughout the United States working on this project. How does this project actually happen? What happens after a kidney biopsy has taken place? Well, in the middle panel here, you can see a typical kidney biopsy, which has the elements of the kidney, the tubules. You also see a lot of scarring in this particular biopsy, which is in the blue color. 
uh, that you see right here. And then to the left-hand uh, panel, you see how we can take every single cell in this biopsy and analyze what type of cell it is and what genes are being activated or what proteins are being activated in that cell. And then we can spatially localize that to where is this is happening in that kidney biopsy. Is it in a period where a uh, part of the biopsy where there's scarring? Is it in a healthier part of the kidney? Is it part of a injury process or a reparative process? And then we can look at even more detail, as you see in the panel uh, on the right, using something called electron microscopy, where we can not only look at cells, but each of the individual components inside a cell. So we have phenomenal technologies now to deploy and apply to interrogate these kidney biopsies uh, to establish and accomplish the goals of the KPNP. And I'll show an example from one of our tissue interrogation sites here, which is from WashU St. Louis and UC San Diego. They're using a technology called single nucleus RNA sequencing or uh, SNRNA-seq. And these are remarkable technologies that have been developed in the last decade, where you can take, as you see on the left-hand side here, the kidney tissue. This is a kidney here. You take the tissue and you break it down into the, uh, the nucleus that, that, that contains the DNA from every single cell in the biopsy. And then we process this through uh, these uh, new assay technologies that have been developed and we use these very fancy bioinformatic approaches to identify every single cell type in the kidney. And as mentioned before, we can then look at what genes are being expressed uh, uh, and upregulated or downregulated in each of these uh, individual cells inside this kidney biopsy. And this is about one technique that we're using inside the Kidney Precision Medicine Project to interrogate these valuable research quality kidney biopsy tissue sections. Now, it's relatively early uh, going in this study. This is intended to be a long-term study, but already we're seeing suggestions that this study is going to be a game changer. One thing that we're seeing is that in many of these biopsies that wouldn't have taken place necessarily for clinical purposes, even though we separate out clinically acute kidney injury from chronic kidney disease, when we look at the pathology at, at the tissue under the microscope, and we, when we look at these single cell techniques and other molecular techniques to see what's going on in the kidney, there's some convergence. So although these are uh, clinically considered separate syndromes, the same drivers of injury or the same drivers of repair we, we are tending to see, which suggests that there may be some therapies for one that would be beneficial for the other condition. We're also seeing that when seasoned clinicians look at these uh, cases and all the clinical data and think they know what's going on, and then they see the biopsy that might not have been done for clinical purposes, in many cases, the pathology diagnosis is different than what people thought before the biopsy. And in some cases, although, again, participants are participating because they are altruistic and they're not expecting to have personal benefit for, from participating in this study, we're already seeing in some cases that the biopsy review is changing management uh, for some individuals who are participants. So these are early signs, they're not definitive, but it makes us hopeful that this research project is going to be a game changer in the long run. One of the important principles for the Kidney Precision Medicine Project is we want to make this data available as a community resource for the entire research community. And in fact, beyond the research community, ultimately for patients and for clinicians as well. And so as soon as the data is validated and quality controlled and curated, we're putting that data into a data repository and making it available on the Kidney Precision Medicine Project database on, their, on our website. And already there's more than 1,500 data set files, which many researchers are downloading to advance the cause of coming up with new treatments for these particular types of kidney diseases.
And our thinking about this study is this data should be a community resource for many types of external stakeholders. So we also want to create tools, online tools, that we will put on the website that will make it easier for a variety of different kind of users to use this data. That includes patients as participants. Ultimately, we hope patients, even if they're not participants in KPMP, can learn from these data sets. Pathologists who normally look at kidney tissue under the microscope, clinicians who take care of patients, and then various kinds of researchers. So we anticipate creating the tools that will allow each of these kinds of stakeholders to obtain value from this community resource. This slide shows how you can access on our website, the data repository, if you wanna download a data. We have de-identified the data that's publicly available, which means it can't be used to identify the participants, uh, but the data can be used to understand and to treat kidney disease, hopefully in the future. The goal of KPMP is to be inclusive and collaborative from the outset. And so we've created many different vehicles or mechanisms by which the data can be used by this large community. And we reach out as well to other research uh, projects so that the data can be shared between them. It's our common goal to come up with better treatments, safer, more effective treatments for these common kidney diseases. I want to emphasize in closing that this project, the Kidney Precision Medicine Project, really is unique in the world of precision, in part because we have engaged the entire community, patients, clinicians, scientists, and ethicists from the get-go, from the outset, and in every aspect of what we do. And in this study, patients really are equitable partners who have an active voice in the entire research enterprise. The culture promotes priorities and safety of patients first, and we are addressing big public health problems that really most commonly lead to end-stage kidney disease or kidney failure. So if we can make an impact on these diseases, it will have a large impact on the most people uh, that we could impact from a public health perspective. The Atlas has a clinical orientation, so uh, it will teach us about the kidney and how it functions in health, as well as the kidney and how it functions in disease conditions. And we are creating next generation tools, including next generation digital kidney pathology, using very deep biological profiling with the tissue interrogation site omics technologies, and also using machine learning and artificial intelligence to better understand injury and repair uh, with these kidney diseases. So once again, I'd like to thank the AAKP for the opportunity to talk to you today about this very exciting research uh, project that's in uh, the early phases, but shows tremendous uh, promise for the future. And our goal is really, truly uh, impact the lives in a positive way of people living with these common kidney diseases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Himavar. We have a couple of questions for you. How has engaging patients and stakeholders in the design and execution of this research project proven invaluable? Well, I would even take that question a bit further and say without active patient engagement and participation, this study couldn't take place. This study really does treat patients as equitable participants in the research in every different way. And in addition, our community engagement committee, which consists of patients who are not enrolled in the study, but help us design the study, implement the study, and work collaboratively with every aspect of the Kidney Precision Medicine Project, every committee with the governing bodies, the patients on our community engagement committee are just critical to the entire function of the entire consortium. So we are grateful for the patient participation and beyond grateful, we recognize this study couldn't take place because of the nature of the study without the kind of patient engagement that we have been experiencing. Dr. Himmelfarb, we have one more question for you. 
Why does the Kidney Precision Project matter to a larger audience of patients worldwide? So kidney disease doesn't obey geographic boundaries. So for, if we take chronic kidney disease, for example, it's estimated that about 37 million people in the United States have some degree of chronic kidney disease. On a global level, it's estimated that about 850 million people have chronic kidney disease. So the proportion of people with chronic kidney disease globally is very similar to the United States. And the same is true for acute kidney injury. So if we can come up with better treatments, safer, more effective treatments for acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease, if we can develop a better, more enhanced molecular understanding of the drivers of the, these disease processes, and we can classify these diseases better for individuals, it will ultimately help the, the public health, not just in the United States, but really the global public health as well. We appreciate Dr. Himmelfarb for taking his time to share his insights and expertise. Thank you.